gotta tell you, my work's not always easy. I mean, granted, this is the greatest job in the world, but whenever somebody asks you what did you do at your job today and you have to answer, I watch Care Bears the movie, I die a little inside. Yeah, I die a little. How can anyone say that with any shred of dignity? How can anyone speak that with any pride? You can. Roll it. Carolot is a place we all can go. Yes, the Care Bears were pretty big in their day. Disgustingly cute, disgustingly nice, and disgustingly marketable. How could any child not get wrapped up in their disgustingness? So when this movie came out, children roared with applause and parents cringed in fear, knowing that they would have to sit through this Technicolor vomit. Is it as bad as it looks? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's take a look at... <sighs> Care Bears the Movie. So we start off with probably the whitest orphanage ever seen on film as our narrator named Mr. Cherrywood comes in. Now off to sleep to dream of clowns and circuses, acrobats and jugglers. He's played by Mickey Rooney. Former biggest star in the world, but now doing... Uh, characters. He decides to tell the children a story before they go to sleep. This is the story of two young children named Kim and Jason, and how they were helped by a group of very special friends. The Care Bears. Ooh, I don't like the face he made there. The Care Bears. Ooh, it's the kind of face that says, I touched half of these children, and I'm okay with that. The Care Bears live in a magic place called Carolot. So as the credits roll, we get our opening song called Carolot, sung by Carol King, isn't that sad? And is it me, or does she sound totally uninterested in singing this? Carolot is a place you'd like to be, riding on a cloud you will care a lot, it's a rainbow fantasy, for laughing out Carolot is paying for my new car, so might as well do it. On top of that, this song is just shit. I mean, listen to these lyrics. Carolot, carousel's playing music in your mind. For dancing and singing. Sometimes you feel so glad, sometimes you feel blue. Trust your feelings, it's not bad. Feelings are just you. What does that even mean? Feelings are just you? Oh, that's good to know. I thought it was Herschel, the feeling fairy. What are they talking about? By the way, it's probably my perverted mind, but what does it look like these two are doing? This bear looks way too happy about what this bear is doing. I think that car is just a cover. So our story begins when they spot two children who, you guessed it, stop caring. Hi, I'm Friend Bear, and this is Secret Bear. We're Care Bears. What do you want? Only to be your friends. Actually, I always wondered what counted as quote-unquote caring. I mean, if I'm ordering a pizza with a friend, is it like, Hey, what kind of toppings you want? I don't care. No, no, wait, I didn't mean that! Uh. Hi, we're the Care Bears, and everybody has to care about something- <laughs> Everyone needs friends, Jason. Even you and Kim. We're not your friends. How do you know our names? Really? That's your biggest question right now? I, I mean, granted, that's a legit query, but that should be like question number five. We know a lot of things about you. Kim reads a lot of books and wants to be a nurse when she grows up. And Jason, you want to be a jet pilot. Yeah. How did you know that? Friends are supposed to know about each other's hopes and dreams. Friends, stalkers, it's all good. So while they try to comfort the two kids, their main leader, named Tenderheart, goes to check on another kid named Nicholas. Nicholas was a magician's helper. He had never had a friend in his life. Hey, close the door! Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, this is why you've never had a friend in your life! I didn't mean it. I bought that trunk thinking maybe there's some junk in it I can use in my magic act. Now half of it's broken. Don't make me tell your parents who may or may not exist and I may or may not be keeping you from. But Nicholas comes across a secret magic book. Nicholas. I am a spirit, Nicholas. Your friend. Unfortunately, it's a book that seems to possess unnatural evil powers. This is your chance to show that you are a greater magician than he. They love him for his magic. They love you for yours. It was never meant for the world of the living. 
While that's going on, though, the Care Bears are working on their latest invention, a teleport. Yes, apparently there's groundbreaking scientific technology in Carolot, as long as the buttons look like Lucky Charms marshmallows. But it accidentally beams the two children up when it wasn't supposed to. Where are we? We're, We're the Care Bears! Bears. More, More friends? <laughs> I like these kids, they have all the right reactions. So while they try to get the teleporter to work, they show the kids around Carolot via a god awful song sequence. Nobody cares like a bear. But fuck that shit. I want to see that evil book again. He'll be in a deep sleep only long enough for you to take over his magic show. But, but I, I, I couldn't. Yes, you can. You must. So this genuinely creepy character that appears is simply known as the spirit. And while not flat out scary, there is something very threatening about her. Maybe it's her voice. Maybe it's the fact that there's just... No face in a book, but there's something that's just a little unsettling. There are dozens of children out there waiting to see your magic. In fact, I don't want to watch her anymore. I'm going to fast forward past her parts. I haven't seen a book so in touch with evil since Twilight. Nicholas, stop! This isn't the way to make friends. Where was he when you needed him? What matters? <laughs> I just love Nicholas's face here. As if to say, wow, I really didn't think I was going to see this today. A talking bear speaking with an evil face in a book. Thank God it's at least Friday. Whoa. So she locks Tenderheart in a cage and convinces Nicholas to start his own magic show. Magic isn't the answer, Nicholas. Your feelings can help you find the true answer. Yes, just listen to the magic talking bear. So Tenderheart breaks his way out as Nicholas's magic show doesn't go as well as he planned. Make them stop laughing! Only you can do that. Simmerzot Kazorgni! Oh no, he turned him into YouTube commenters. This is only the beginning. So Nicholas and his evil books start turning everybody in the world into jerks. Because of this, Carolot starts to crumble. The caring meter dropped two whole points! <gasps> oh. We're reaching Jersey levels! Jersey levels! So Kim and Jason decide to join the Care Bears in their mission to stop the spirit. Hold on to this for me, Jason. Don't lose it. It's very important. Then why don't you hold on to it? Well, anyway, they try teleporting them to Earth, but the earthquake destroys the teleporter in the process. They never made it to Earth! What do you mean? Where are they? They're lost! Somewhere between here and Earth! Yeah, um, what exactly is the cosmology for Carolot anyway? I thought it was in the clouds, now it's in a different dimension? I mean, where are they expected to end up? They're lost! Somewhere between here and Earth. So they decide to take a river down to Earth. That's right, there's a river in the clouds now. In the hopes that this will somehow cross dimensions. I don't know, here's how they explain it. No one in Caramot had ever followed the river. They had no idea whether it would lead them to Kim, Jason, and the missing Care Bears, or to nowhere at all. in your story, why would they never follow a river in the sky? They, they just never question why it was there? And for that matter, if they never followed it, why would they have a giant sailboat on standby? Quiet, or I will smack you with my ring hand. So Jason, Kim, and the other two Care Bears are trapped in between worlds, which I guess is filled with lost cereal mascots. Everyone in the forest of feelings knows of playful heart monkey and brave heart. I know, I know, but how can I not put that in? So, even though they're lost in the forest of feelings, the people of Earth are deteriorating and Carolide is falling apart, that doesn't stop our heroes from having a song number. Do you have a house made all out of wood for keeping you dry when it's raining? Wow, that's pretty bad, kid. I mean, not William Hung bad, but... But bad. I see a bee on Fridge. 
bear's nose. Stop. Stay perfectly still. Oh. Um, that was totally necessary. What, was the movie like 20 seconds too short so you had to add a B scene? The song is pointless enough already. You don't need any more padding. Meanwhile, Nicholas and the Spear continue to turn all the people of the world into rotten a-holes. These two small children still care. But they were to fall under my spell. Ah, but those, those soft little bears shield them from your spells with their love and caring. What is up with this woman's voice? Is someone just eating her out while she's saying her lines? That's cute. Cuddly little bears. Ah, oh, oh, they care so much. Oh, mm, oh I love a happy ending. You must finish it. Say it. Zip, zap, zug! Oh! oh, great. You unleashed hell. The apocalypse has finally begun, and Satan is going to rule the earth. Good job. Now go. So that purple fart goes to find the others as the Care Bear ship comes across more friends that they can make good toys out of. I'm Coozy Heart Penguin. Helping someone in need is what warms my heart and keeps me cozy. Only $9.95. Pester scream and yell at your parents until they finally break down and buy you one. It's more important than breathing. They also come across a pink elephant. And guessing the amount of booze you've probably had throughout this picture, I'm guessing you're coming across a few as well. <laughs> Things aren't so hot with Kim and Jason, as the purple smoke possesses the only tree that happens to have an evil face on it. Ah! Whoa! Hey! Charge! They may take our lives, but they'll never take our marketability! Wow. Fail. But luckily, Speedy Gun Hoppus comes along to save the day. So their new bunny friend joins them on their adventure, but unfortunately, the purple smoke takes on another form. Braveheart! Ugh, you know, you're really bad at that. Just because you're brave doesn't mean you're capable. Our only hope is a Care Bear stare. I just hope it works. There's only two of us. Care Bears, stare! <laughs> Two of us aren't enough. Taste the rainbow, motherfucker! <laughs> well, fuck caring. The answer to this problem was violence. Wonderful, caring violence. <laughs> so they gather all the other animals of the forest, because there weren't enough fucking toys to sell, as they find their way out of the forest and back to Earth. How lucky the river just so happens to pass space and time. Do you still have the key that I gave you? Sure do. If we lose that key, Jason, we can never win. That's why I'm entrusting it to a small boy I barely know. How does this make sense again? So Nicholas casts a spell to turn Kim and Jason into heartless jerks. But he needs them to be close in order for the spell to work. Nicholas! Nicholas! You're too late! Too late! I have officially become a vampire! Uh, not one of those sparkling ones, though. They totally suck ass. The Care Bears try to stop him, but the evil of the book is just way too strong. The spirit's power is too strong! Look! Nicholas! Oh, Jesus. Where are they? This kid could totally give the Emperor from Star Wars a run for his money. Now, young Skywalker, you will die. The Care Bears try to, um, stare him down, as the other animals try to help. Everybody call! Okay guys, that's really not helping. I mean, maybe if you get a, I don't know, a gun, or, or some kind of blunt instrument, or a, a... Yeah, you're totally useless. Kim! Jason! No! It's them! <laughs> Good lord! What is up with this kid's face? He's turning into Judge Doom from Who Framed Roger Rabbit! When I kill your brother, I talk! Yes! Wait! <laughs> that was a break. That was literally a break. We care about you! We used to be like you! We 
thought nobody cared. But we were wrong. Now we want to be your friends, Nicholas. Okay, you know the drill. The kids start saying that they care about Nicholas, which gives him the will to care, and thus he stops using the book. Jason, the key! <sighs> Building up this whole time as the big secret weapon could be duplicated whenever they want? What, did they just want to make the little boy feel important? <laughs> so Carolot is saved, the two kids get adopted, and Nicholas finally perfects his magic act. Care Bears also welcome their new animal friends to be Care Bears, Lions, whatever, as they celebrate by dancing like they have a dump in their pants. And it turns out all the children in the orphanage fell asleep. No doubt bored senseless of Mr. Cherrywood's story. Now they'll never know what eventually became of Nicholas. I guess all they need to know is that he too lived happily ever after. Happier than I ever thought I could be. <laughs> Good story, but he missed the part about the sodomy and the ties to the JFK assassination, but I guess that stuff wasn't very important. So that's the Care Bears movie. How does it hold up? Well, yeah, it's stupid, but to be fair, it's for little kids. It's kind of hard to beat up on something intended for really young children. It's not good, but there's not really anything bad in it for kids. It's relatively harmless. So if your age is one to, I don't know, one, you'll probably enjoy it okay. But there's still one thing that really bothers me. Why was the book so evil? I mean, what was her motivation all this time? It doesn't make any sense. Open the book, Critic. You wanted to know what my motivation was? Yes, yeah, yeah, I do. It was to make the people of the world stop caring. Well, I knew that, but why did you want that to begin with? I don't know, I don't care. Oh, I see, because you don't care and nobody else cares. It keeps going around the Yeah, circle. kind of a catch-22 thing, really. Yeah. Piss off. Wait, wait, no! I can give you a happy ending! I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Hey, ho. Carolot is a place we 